it's never, never boring, it's always fascinating. Yeah. Mostly we start with working with a, with a real model and that's, that's a collaborative effort and I take pictures because a lot of those poses I do are very acrobatic or, or athletic or, and me, it takes me several hours or days or over several weeks to, to create the model. I cannot ask the model to please keep that difficult pose. So instead I take a number of photos and then I use those pictures as, as reference. I print them on paper and I look at them uh, when I'm modeling the, the shape. Um, and Thank I you. do that work on the computer. Oh, wow. <laughs> because of that process, I had to teach myself a digital modeling, which is not that different from modeling in real clay with your fingers. The overall process is very similar, but it's a steep learning curve. You have to think of the computer as a, as a tool. Like the modeling tool will not make you an instant artist. <laughs> there's, not, there's not a make art button on the computer. And in the computers, it's no difference than working in the real life. You can, you can turn around your object and look it from a distance. You can zoom in closely. Okay. All right, let's save this. And, uh, and it's not unlike traditional um, sculpting. When I used to work in bronze, uh, you end up with a mold, uh, a mold of your original, which you used to make copies in, in metal. And, uh, and that mold becomes your master, if you wish. That's really the, the, the archive. Uh, when you work digitally, you've got a file. It's a bit like sculpture by numbers. Luckily, they all have engrave, and that's on the file I gave to the engraver, uh, a sequence number. Piece by piece, one by one, that's how it's made. Slowly. That sculpture will be hanging from a tree, and so I need to have a strong enough force to hang it. Mm -hmm. I need to figure out how much she weighs. A bit of the blue glue first. <laughs> Making sure it's clean. Find the alignment. Press together firmly in place with the help of a clamp where and if you can. And then apply the solvent that will melt some of the acrylic. So yeah, there's no shortcuts in this process. You have to glue them one by one, paying as much attention at each slice, not, no shortcuts. And this is very meticulous work. Becomes a bit tedious after a while, but also very satisfying because you slowly see your sculpture appearing before your eyes. The assembly is the most time-consuming uh, part of the process and there's no way I can do it all by myself. So I'm lucky to have a whole lot of uh, helpers here in the workshop uh, working with me most days. Uh, and that makes life so much more interesting. Cast acrylic, this is used in, in the industry as a replacement for glass. Um, but it comes in all kinds of colors and, and transparencies and fluorescence and it's attracting the light in fantastic ways. And so I'm, exp I'm still experimenting with, uh, with acrylic. It's a fantastic material to work with. She's a bit smaller than first anticipated. An attempt to reduce the weight and the silk will end up hiding the entire sculpture, so I think we'll do without the silk. She'll just be flying in thin hair. Yeah, and if we use a, like a nylon fishing line, it'll barely be visible. She'll really look like she's flying on her own. It's amazing like, how much you can do. It feels really detailed. 
You're right, it's quite clever, particularly like on the face. You kind of can see facial features, but when you look at it close, there's like those big gaps in between. Well, that's pretty cool, like the way that the, the, the sun sort of reflected uh, the whole thing glows. Yeah. Can you see how this light's yeah. just working through it? Yeah.